Greetings, it is I, once again, Count Dracula. And since I have figured out that Enecrol sustained me just as well, if not better, than human blood, we are going to be solving the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x squared times log x dx. So yeah, this is a sort of logarithmic transform of a Fresnel integral. And by a Fresnel integral, of course, I mean we will be solving the other Fresnel integral, the cosine one. So what exactly would be our approach? Well, all of us are obsessed with complex analysis, so whenever we see sines and cosines, we immediately think of Euler's beautiful formula. So we do know that e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i times sine theta. So that means I could write i here as the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the i x squared log x dx. So this is now a logarithmic transform of a complex Gaussian. Okay, cool. It is just getting better and better. So just for convenience purposes, I'm going to replace theta here by negative theta. So e to the negative i theta would be cosine negative theta. Cosine being even is just cosine theta. But sine is an odd function, so for that, we're going to need a negative i sine theta. So I'm going to replace this by e to the negative i x squared and another negative sign outside, just to make sure that the equality is not effed up. So this is our new target integral, or our version of the target integral, where we want to now evaluate this and separate it into its real and imaginary parts. And the first step in that is to let x squared equal t, which implies that dx here is dt terribly, sorry about that, over 2 times root t, and the limits of integration are clearly not bothered. So this implies that i here is a negative imaginary part of the integral from 0 to infinity, e to the negative i t guy times log of root t, and thanks to log properties, we can write the exponent of one half as a coefficient of one half. But we do have this extra factor of one half from the differential element as well, so I'm just going to write this as a quarter. And then we're left with t to the negative one half, extremely important, cannot forget that. And of course we have dt. So what exactly would be the strategy to solve this new daunting version of the target integral? Well, recall the Laplace transform, for which you obviously have a table that you carry, out, carry around with you all the time. Perfectly normal behavior. At least that's what I tell myself. So the Laplace transform of t to the alpha as alpha with alpha being greater than negative 1, that is, is defined as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st, this of course being a function of the complex variable s, times t to the alpha dt, and this thing converges to gamma alpha plus 1 over s to the al alpha plus 1. So if I differentiate with respect to alpha t to the alpha, I'm left with t to the alpha again times log t, which is pretty much what we need. So that means we're actually interested in the derivative of the Laplace transform with respect to alpha evaluated at alpha equal to negative one half and s approaching i rather than equaling i, technically speaking. So yes, this is a limiting case. So let's differentiate the Laplace transform with respect to the alpha parameter. So then we have this thing that I'm going to call Laplace prime, just because that sounds cooler. So Laplace prime of t to the alpha as a function of s, this thing would be, let me just give myself some writing space, on differentiating under the integral sign, we have e to the minus st, and the derivative with respect to alpha of t to the alpha dt, which of course we know sorts out to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st, t to the alpha log t dt. And like I said, we're interested in the case of alpha being 
negative one half and s approaching i. But before that, we of course know what the integral converges to. We know that this thing converges to gamma of alpha plus one over s to the alpha plus one. So this implies that Laplace prime of t to the alpha equals the derivative with respect to alpha of what exactly? We have gamma of alpha plus one over s to the alpha plus one. And this implies that the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st times t to the alpha times log t dt equals now for the quotient rule s to the alpha plus one gamma prime of alpha plus one. So we have Laplace prime, we have gamma prime. This is prime mathematics. Minus gamma alpha plus one times the derivative of that s function. So that's s to the alpha plus one times log s times, of course, this gamma, gamma alpha plus one term remains as is. And we have s to the two times alpha plus one because we need to square the denominator, of course. Now, letting alpha tend to negative one half and s approach i, we have the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative i t times t to the negative one half, terribly sorry about that, log t dt. What is wrong with my t's today? Log t dt equal to, now, s is approaching i, and alpha is negative one half, and negative one half plus one is one half, last time I checked. Then we have gamma prime at one half minus, again, i to the one half times log i times gamma one half, all divided by, in the denominator, we actually have i squared, which is negative one, but wait, we have one half outside as well. So that means there is cancellation, of course. And we're left with, well, just i. Okay, cool. So 1 over i is, of course, negative i. So I can write this as negative i, and i to the 1 half can be factored out. And we're left with gamma prime at 1 half minus log i times gamma 1 half. Now let's just clean this up a little bit. So what exactly is i? And of course, we're using principal branches here for the logarithm and the power functions, or root functions in this case. So i to the 1 half would be e to the i pi over 2 to the 1 half, which is just e to the i pi over 4. And log i is equal to terribly, sorry about that, log of absolute value of i plus i times pi over 2, which is, of course, the principal argument. And absolute value of i is 1, so this thing just collapses to 0. So this means that Laplace prime of t to the negative 1 half as s tends to i is, in fact, what exactly do we have left? Oh yeah, we have negative i times e to the negative i pi over 4 times gamma prime at 1 half minus i pi over 2 times gamma of 1 half. And of course, gamma 1 half is terribly, sorry about that. And that looks much better. So gamma 1 half is famously equal to root pi. And gamma prime at 1 half is quite beautifully equal to negative root pi times order mascheroni constant plus 2 times log 2. And we might as well factor out the negative signs, and that should be all good to go. So we have plus i times pi over 2 times root pi, and all of this is being multiplied by i times e to the negative i pi over... Why did I get a negative sign? I do not recall. Nope, it's the positive i pi over 4 terribly. Sorry about that. Okay, cool. Now this is actually quite nice. I can multiply out the i so that we have i squared is negative 1. So that's negative pi over 2 times root pi. And we still have this i times root pi times gamma plus 2 log 2. And then we have another complex number on the outside, e to the i pi over 4. 
would be cosine pi over 4, which is equal to sine pi over 4 and is root 1 over root 2, plus i times 1 over root 2 as well. So that is the derivative of the Laplace transform, but back to our target integral. So the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x squared log x dx, recall that required a factor of negative 1 quarter, times the Laplace transform of t to the negative 1 half, evaluated as s tends to i. So what does that sort out to? We have this negative 1 quarter outside, and now for the toughest bit of the video, that is term by term multiplication. I'm looking at, I'm looking for the imaginary part. Terribly sorry about that. So imaginary part, that means this thing with this thing, right? So that is pretty much negative pi over 2 times root pi over 2, which is dope, plus all of this. Again, we have root pi over 2, Euler Mascheroni, plus 2 log 2. So by multiplying out the negative 1 quarter, or just the negative 1, and factoring out the root pi over 2, we have 1 quarter of root pi over 2 of what exactly is left behind? Oh yeah, we have gamma plus 2 log 2 minus pi over 2. So that is the result of the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x squared log x. Whereas if we're interested in the integral from 0 to infinity of cosine of x squared log x, then in that case we would get... What exactly would we get? No need of an extra negative sign outside, okay. And we're supposed to take the real part in that case. And the real part would be, well, these two being multiplied with each other. I squared is negative 1. So we're going to have negative signs all across. So we have negative 1 quarter times root pi over 2 times the euler mascheroni constant plus 2 log 2 plus pi over 2, which is absolutely beautiful as well. So two gorgeous looking integrals with absolutely beautiful results involving the order mascaroni constant. Been a while since this thing made an appearance on the channel. We have pi and we have root pi, as well as log 2. A usual visitor here as well, and is always welcome. Just as you guys are, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram as well, and I will see you in the next one.